mind if I videotape you? Because it was what I call feral birth, it's sort of a wildlife birth. And a lot of the people that I work with, um, I work really hard prenatally to get them to understand that women know best how to keep their babies safe, especially whenever they're healthy and supported and not afraid. We also have the advantage that babies want to be born alive. Not that all of them are. Don't think that. But they want to be born alive, and they only know one way out. So you combine those two things, and you can begin to believe that it works. I wear this shirt to birth a lot, because this is the word that I want women to see when they are about to give it up and think they can't do it anymore. So this birth was a second time mom. They were what we might call in our community hippies, who lived up a holler. They did have running water, and most of the time, and electricity, most of the time. Uh, it was a very quick birth, it was Friday night. And um, when I got there, she was laboring in this very large bathtub, but they were having water problems, and the water was getting cold. So as she began to come into transition, she wanted to go outside to a, my birth pool, which is an inflatable, portable birth pool, which she had in this screen tent, okay? Somewhere between when I arrived, it was only about half hour, I was only there for 45 minutes, so somewhere between when I arrived and when she went out into the tent, we had begun to have, we had began to have a torrential rain. Oh, torrential. So, you know, there's nothing for me to do but follow her, right? You know, because she heads out to the tub. And I like throw a towel over myself and I grab my waterproof doppler and, you know, go running up. But now it's a screen tip. So water is pouring in everywhere. I'm standing in angled deep water all around her. And then the lightning begins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh. You know, ACOG says water birth is dangerous. Don't <laughs> <laughs> this is what they <laughs> I don't think they'd like this. So, you know, you know the, the bit, you see the lightning, you count, mm -hmm. you yes. hear the thunder. Mm -hmm. So I see this pretty good flash of lightning and I'm, I'm counting. I'm like, okay, it's about six miles away. And all of a sudden, it hits a power line or a, a cord that had gone from their house out to an Airstream trailer, which fortunately was on tires so that it was grounded, and the grandma and two-year-old were sleeping up there. And it was, I mean, it cracked, fried the grandma's um, charger for her phone, and um, immediate, you know, like, boom. I yelled, I mean, like, I couldn't keep myself from, ah! you know, whenever it hit. And almost immediately afterwards, she pushed, and she pushed the baby out, uh, about a seven pound baby. Um, in the meantime, when I realized she was starting to push, and we were here, and I didn't have anything but my waterproof duffel, um, and not all of it's waterproof, by the way, um, I said to the dad, you know that stuff I laid out on the kitchen counter? Could you just go throw in a plastic bag and bring it to me? So he runs in, he throws what I call my grab and go kit, it has all the things you might need in the immediate postpartum in a plastic bag. I usually carry it around my cookie sheet, you know, or in a basket. So this is my first plastic bag room. So you know, it comes out with a little plastic bag and then she pushes the baby out. I was completely limp from this point. Completely limp. I gave them about a six after. Um, and it took a little bit to get them to come into this body. So I grabbed my plastic bag my bulb, get my stethoscope, and, you know, fortunately, with a little bit of stimulation, he came into his body, and he was fine. So by five minutes and ten minutes, you know, he was nine and ten. And then, so it's still raining, the thunder's passed, the lightning's passed, the moment he started to yell at us, the tree frogs began to answer him. It was the coolest thing, you know? I thought, okay, I've not quite done one like this before. I've not done a lot of very interesting births. But I wanted to share that story with you 
because it was definitely woman-led. My main thought through it all was, we are going to get electrocuted. <laughs> Yet I had no fear. So we did, we did, we did. And there was no way I could get her out. And into the house. You know, and I just kept thinking, oh my god, like, you know, like if anybody could see this, like, like real people, you know, you'd be like, oh. Yet it was so beautiful. And we had nothing. Um, and it worked. Okay? So after the birth, Dad scooped, after the placenta and all that, which came right out, Dad scoops her up, I scoop the placenta out of the pool, and I've got the baby, and I'm back there, you know, all this tough stuff. And Dad carries Mom, and we run in the house and get everybody settled in. That was a very normal push for in there. So I thought that was a good birth to start this with, because you just never know. You never know where you might be. You never know what might be happening in the environment. And you might not have your stuff. Ultimately, I really didn't need even the stethoscope and the bulbs around to I use. But it was kind of nice for me to have at least that security blanket of those things. Okay. Um, so what I'd like, so now you know kind of the craziness in my life. They're not all like that. Um, and if you have any questions for me, what I'm going to be teaching uh, is this afternoon, it's called Basic Disaster Birth Support. And it was created with a little help from our friends, by a friend of mine. And it's really about being able to teach the lay people, anybody, Girl Scout badge approach, to what not to do in a normal birth. Okay? Our intention was to have this taught to every community. So there'd be one, at least one woman in every church, at least one girl in every high school, at least one person in every neighborhood who at least knew what to do to keep everybody off of that woman and, uh, and optimize physiology. Okay, so that's a lot of what I'm gonna set the basis for and I'll, I'll tell you more about it later. The really cool thing about this course, I've taught it a number of times, is that you get to teach it to people who if you said you're gonna teach them physiology or that you were gonna talk about in place birth, they would glaze over and they would stop listening. But because you set it up as a disaster, as an emergency preparedness, they're very open to it, and you watch them begin to change their understanding of birth. So it's this very insidious, entertaining, and I have so much fun with it, way to change the birth culture and to change our, the general population's understanding back to the birth of something they can believe in and that it works. So that's kind of what's going to set the tone. And then we'll go from there. I'll let Andrea introduce herself and Bonnie as we move more into um, provider skills that you can use in those instances, especially when you have a um, I will say that I've been married for a long time. That's why I can be very flexible. And why I enjoy letting other people think it's their idea, even when I know I plan to see. I've raised four children to adulthood. That's no easy feat. And I have five grandchildren, all born into my hands. I'm also, um, I have a school in Virginia called the Academy of Experiential Midwifery Education and a home birth practice, Waterford Midwifery. And, um, and I'm also the vice president of the Midwives and Wives of North America. And I have a little propaganda about that, about our upcoming annual convention. So, does anybody else want to do and introduce yourself or you? Um, sure. Um, I'm not going to be eloquent like her. Um, I'll just stand here. <laughs> um, I'm Bonnie Gruenberg. Um, I am a CNM. Um, I, I was a paramedic for 12 years. Um, and never delivered a baby in the ambulance. So, figured I had to become a midwife in order to deliver a baby. <laughs> Um, uh, my first five years of practice were in Erie, Pennsylvania, at a hospital in a very dysfunctional practice, but I got a lot of good experience. Um, my next five years of practice was in a really good hospital, also in Pennsylvania, uh, Camp Hill, which is right near Harrisburg, with some really awesome doctors that uh, give women choices. Um, they do um, uh, vaginal breaches, they do 
uh, the backs after two C-sections, after uh, T incisions, after, you know, the, the, they're just really supportive and um, pro-woman. Um, so I had good fortune working there, but it was crazy busy. And my true love was the uh, hospital birth. So right now I am at, uh, I'm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Um, uh, we have a very large out of hospital birth center. Um, we delivered uh, 530 babies last year, um, seven midwives full time. Um, one of the seven positions is filled by three part timers. Um, we have a, a beautiful birth center. We do water births. Um, we just built a third birth room, um, and we're going to build a fourth. Um, about 60 something percent of our deliveries are at the birth center. We do home births and we also have privileges at um, a community hospital and our, our relationship with the doctors seems to be getting better and we've got uh, a new um, backup attending that is um, very, very midwifey, very midwife friendly and so we've got some high hopes for that. And, oh, and I wrote best. Um, but, uh, and best um, is way out of date. Um, I am working on a second edition. Um, I think two, 2008 was a publication date, which is really a long time ago for a medical book. So um, the, the new best will be much better. Um, have a lot of new stuff. Oh, that's all. And I love horses. <laughs> I love horses. I've got two mirrors and then I write about wild horses as well. Swallow, you look like egg in my mouth.